When people think of huge Power Rangers crossovers, they usually think of Forever Red, Legendary Battle, Shattered Grid, but why does no one talk about Once a Ranger? What about this special that makes it so forgotten? Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up guys, it's Este here and welcome back to another video and today we'll be talking about Once a Ranger, one of my favorite Power Rangers crossovers and personally one of the most underrated crossovers in all of Power Rangers history. It's almost 15 years old at this point so I think it's a good time to revisit this episode and see what's good and what's bad about it. 1,500 likes and I'll bring you more videos just like this one. I love talking about crossovers so much. It's so good seeing Rangers of different teams collide. It's so much fun. And if you haven't subscribed and ring the notification bell, you can watch more videos like this. I upload every single week the best Power Ranger videos in the game. You know what to do. So if you don't know about Once a Ranger, I don't know how, but hey, it's the 20th and 21st episodes of the 2007 series Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. And being so long since the original air day back in 2007, does it still hold up today? Regardless, the special part of this team up is that it really doesn't have a Sentai counterpart in a way. Yes, it does because Gogo -Go Sentai Bokanger versus Super Sentai, that's a movie that exists. And they even use the same Rangers, kind of sort of just the Blue Ranger, I think on that one. And they do use Sentai footage for like Megazord fights and final strikes or whatever. But this once a Ranger team up like Forever Red, is in a completely original episode created by the minds of Power Rangers. It has its own villain, its own Ranger team, like coming back Ranger team, and its own story elements that makes it really unique. Sentai at the time was celebrating its 30th anniversary. They even had their own Ranger called Aka Red, which never even showed up in Power Rangers. I still think it would be cool if it did though. Operation Overdrive, however, was celebrating 15 years of the Power Rangers franchise. And in the last big team up, which I talked about, it's Forever Red, they celebrated the 10 years of Power Rangers by bringing back 10 Red Rangers. So in Once Ranger, instead of celebrating 15 years of the show, they more or less celebrated the last five years, the five years that Disney had the help of Power Rangers. Of course, they had some MMPR influence in there with Adam returning and Alpha 6, because you know, it was 2007, even back then, people were nostalgic about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. So let's get right into this episode. I'm not really gonna talk about the whole episode because you know, it's two parts. Unlike many other Power Rangers teams like Forever Red and Dimensions in Danger and Legendary Battle even, they're all one part crossovers. Once a Ranger took its time and stretched out its story and its characters between two separate episodes, which is genius. I don't know why anybody does that anymore. They kind of did it in, you know, Dino Fury, no, Dino Charge. And, there's a lot of dino shows, right? Dino Thunder, too. You know, with the big dino crossover in Beast Morphers, they did that with three separate episodes, but they were kind of like, like I said, separate episodes. They weren't really interlinked like Once a Ranger is. Anyways, here's the summary from Ranger Wiki. Ding. The son of Lord Zed and Rita Repulsa, Thrax, unites all four Corona Awara seeking factions of villains into a new evil alliance. When they manage to overwhelm the Overdrive Rangers, their connection to the Morphing Grid is severed and their powers destroyed. With the gem still needed protection, the Sentinel Knight assembles a team of replacement rangers made up of members of previous or future, you know, as ding, you get it. Previous and future teams of Power Rangers. No longer having ranger powers, however, the former Overdrive Rangers return to their civilian lives. All but Mac, who learns of Thrax's plan to destroy the Sentinel Knight, and seeks out the only item capable of doing so, the legendary sword, Excelsior. Will he be doing this alone, or can the call of action prove the adage of once a ranger, always a ranger to his former teammates? Meanwhile, the replacements, the team of retro rangers, head to Angel Grove to seek out the only being capable of repairing the morphing grid, Alpha 6. Even if they succeed, can two combined teams of Power Rangers stop Thrax for evil and permanently break up the evil alliance? Yo, so straight up, this episode, or episodes as there too, was absolutely amazing. Sitting down and watching them back, it literally crosses off all the check marks on what a good Power Rangers crossover should be. But I remember at the time, I was like six years old and like on the internet. Everybody was hating on this episode. Everybody was hating on Overdrive in general. And they were just pushing their hate onto this episode for guess what? No reason. I think there's no reason to hate this episode. I love the Retro Rangers, every single bit of them. I love how they use the Overdrive arsenal, like the bikes and the Megazord. That's great. I love seeing that. And this team is also perfect, like literally perfect, you know, cause they're all like fan favorite Rangers in a way. And they even had a cheeky way of explaining how Bridge is from the future, but I don't know how Sentinel Knight can repair Bridge's powers, even though he's from the future. Can he in theory revive anybody's powers from the future if they haven't been created yet? There's a lot. This is confusing. 
And the chemistry between all the rangers in this retro ranger team, which I love the name, is also really cool. Like we have Adam, the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger, pretty interesting choice out of all the Mighty Morphin Rangers, but out of all the old Mighty Morphin team, Adam is definitely up top there as one of the best members. Black just looks good at him, I'll say that much. And Johnny Young Bosch, obviously a great choice. He really was acting like a seasoned veteran because he has no powers like the rest of these new guys, so he was just using the powers of martial arts and Huxi Ayaz. I love that. Then we got the Blue Wind Ranger, Tori Hansen, which is also really good. I love Tori. She was the only girl in her team, just like Kira, who also returns in this episode, the Yellow Dino Thunder Ranger. Then, of course, we had the SPD Red Ranger, Bridge Carson. I know, right? So they didn't get Jack back in this episode because apparently his actor was dating the Yellow Dino Thunder Ranger, but they broke up and it was a bad breakup. So they just bought Bridge back because it just would have been real confusing because they needed an SPD Red Ranger there. So instead of Sky coming back, which I don't know why they didn't get Sky back, they got Bridge. So, you know, out of the three guys, you got the one that isn't really the Red Ranger at all. But hey, I love Bridge. Favorite character, Buttery. Love that. Love the show. And of course, we got the green Mystic Ranger, Xandar, which I love because he's just one of the fan favorites. He's a New Zealand guy. I love that. And there wasn't even Operation Overdrive and Mystic Force crossover in this season, so seeing Xandar there with the fellow Overdrive Rangers, that's always really cool. One big point of criticism I see towards this episode is how the Overdrive Rangers give up so easily. Like, okay, I get it, they give up, but they give up for good reason. You know, they have no powers, no Ranger powers, and their civilian powers can't really do much fighting all the villains who finally came together. Like, they have so many different factions in Operation Overdrive, which they should have done since episode one, just came together, destroyed the Rangers, and then scrabble along to see who can get the Corona Aura. But it's good seeing all the villains work together. That's always nice. The Rangers kind of did the same too, even though they quit being Rangers and went back to their own regular lives, they still came back together at the end because Mac, you know, Mac's the heart of the team, even though he's a robot, spoiler alert. He's the heart of the team, Brings the team together to get the Excelsior. Is that a Stanley reference or something? I don't know. There's other teams of Rangers in the past and even the future that quit just as hard or even worse than the Overdrive Rangers. So I don't see what the big deal is. And Thrax, also who's the son of Lord Zen and Rita Repulsa. What? He is such a fire villain. Amazing suit. Amazing story. What they did with him and the Sentinel Knight. They were like enemies and he got captured and just a thing like his mom, Rita. What questions me is how was Thrax born? Because, you know, Lord Zen and Rita... How would they have the time to like conceive this child? And you know, Lord Zenarita became good. They, you know, kind of the destruction, the big Z-wave or whatever, made him turn human. So what's that about? How did, how did Thrax come about? I got questions. There's just so many cool moments in this episode with both teams of Rangers. Literally Mac in his civilian form cuts a monster, like a big, huge Megazord sized monster in half. Like he did that himself with the Excelsior, which, is actually a Sentinel Knight power-up because it just turns Sentinel Knight back into a robot form, which cool, I guess. I don't really care for Sentinel Knight like that. And of course, there is definitely some amazing fight scenes both in Ranger and civilian form for both Overdrive Rangers and the Retro Rangers. I love seeing fight scenes, especially when it's just the actors kicking butt. There was also the moments where the Retro Rangers, the ones, the Disney side, actually, that have powers like Tori's water power, Kira's loudness, Bridges aura thing and just being buttery and Xandar's magic, you know, they used all those powers out and I love how they did it. And they even explained where the Rangers are today. They just used literally one line for each Ranger saying, oh, Tori does surfboards and Adam has a gym and that's it. That's all I need to do. Literally crossing the check marks. They even have their own morphing sequence. Everyone did their own morph call. They even did a little roll call with the yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot, but it crosses off all those check marks too. The Ranger pairings in this fight were also good. Love that. We had both Red Rangers, Operation Overdrive and SPD Red together. That's cool. We had the Mystic Force and the Overdrive team together. The girls were going together. Six Ranger of Overdrive, the Mercury, he's just alone defeating a villain by himself. That's cool. Adam is fighting Thrax as he should, as he should with his martial arts abilities. And he even uses the Overdrive Defender Vest, which is also much cooler. I need that in landing collection, by the way. Hasbro, you know what to do. Overall, there was just an easy balance of action, drama and overall story in this overdrive team up that i have literally no clue why people don't talk about it or just hate it why because they didn't use the mighty morphin theme for when adam came back that rock theme was still cool like come on can can you tell me that's not cool i don't want to blindly support this episode but y'all just find the smallest stuff to complain about that's all i'm saying 
personally, I love this episode. I think it's very underrated and people should talk about it more. I can't wait for all the Retro Rangers to come in a big landing collection pack. I need them all fitted up together. Just seeing their suits again, seeing them all in action. Like, it just, it makes sense. The team is great. The Overdrive Rangers did a good job. Literally everyone did amazing. Alpha 6, that's weird. He had a weird voice and everything, but it's still Alpha. He fixed the Morphing Grid, which is a physical place that you can enter somehow. I don't know, Alpha's a robot. Uh, they went back to Angel Grove. They didn't see the, like, the park or the school or anything. They went into a warehouse, but you know, I guess that's cool. Literally just crossing check mark after check mark. I don't know why, but I wanna hear your opinions and thoughts on Once a Ranger. Is Once a Ranger actually a good Power Rangers crossover? Please let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read them all. And out of all the team ups, you know, like Once a Ranger, Forever Red, Legendary Battle, which I also did a video about, check it out. Which team up is the best, you know? Dimensions in Danger, throw it in there. Shadow Grid, throw it in there. I think the worst one is probably the one with the, one with the Ninja Turtles. The best team up was when Piggy showed up in Mystic Force. I love that. That was a cute moment. But that's it for me today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, the Don Fuego. I'm also on Instagram, not Don Fuego. I love you guys so much. E Squad forever. Have a good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you're at. And of course, and it's always, stay awesome, everybody.